Okay, Caden, I, I guess first and foremost, you're named uh, the newest captain of the Prince Albert Raiders, 44th in team history. How does it feel? What does it mean to you? Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's an honor. Um, could have been a lot of different guys that, uh, that could have been named that. And, um, you know, it's awesome. I'm excited to, to get back um, with the guys and um, with, uh, with our leadership group this year. Obviously, we got, we got a few guys, so it'll be good to, to be able to um, get to work with them and um, Haber and the coaches and um, you know, make, uh, make a good culture in the room and um, get back uh, with the guys. Uh, Follow-up question here for Caden. Just um, you mentioned obviously in the press release learning from guys like Braden, Bahal, Zach Hayes, and a little bit from uh, Curtis Miski. What are some of those things that you learn from those guys that you hope to kind of use here now that you are the captain? Yeah, I think probably the biggest thing is just uh, accountability. Um, I think part of our success over the, the past two years has been that. And, um, you know, when we're on the ice, um, sometimes you got to hold players accountable, even though it's, it's not really what, what you want to do. Sometimes you got to kind of put your foot down and, um, and be that guy and kind of hold them accountable that way. So, um, that's the biggest thing I've definitely seen that from Pickle and Hazer. Um, and, uh, I've taken notes of that and, um, just being yourself and, and not changing because you, you have a letter on your Jersey, and I'm just staying the same person you are and, um, doing whatever the team needs to, to win. Well, Mark, this one's for you. Uh, you look back, it's been a few years since the Raiders have had an 18 year old captain. It's been, you know, Hazer was 20 last year. Pahal was 19. Miski got it at 19 years old, I think. Uh, what is it about Caden that, that makes you believe he's ready to, to take on this role at a younger age? Well, to, I'll put it even into more perspective. I've been coaching in junior hockey for a few years, and this is the first 18 year old captain that I've ever had. So I think that uh, says, speaks for itself with, with Caden, he, uh, he's earned the opportunities, earned the right. There's just lots of, um, I guess, dimensions to him, both um, as a player and as an individual that lends itself for him being a, a good captain. And he's learned um, from some great guys. And I think the, the greatest thing is he's a winner. He knows how to win. He's been a part of winning. And to transfer that knowledge is, is important. Follow-up question for coach, how different was the process this year in picking out a whole leadership group or was it kind of a little bit kind of similar in certain ways to what has been done in the past? Well, it's been very different. Like COVID has changed everything as everyone knows, and this is no different. Um, you know, we don't have the three Europeans coming back. Uh, we've got new guys coming into the team. We've got guys that have graduated. So usually um, the team has a huge voice in this, but we also give the team time to, uh, to, uh, get to know everybody and establish that before the leadership group is, is, uh, chosen. A lot of times the players have those choices, but, uh, at this time we just thought that, uh, we had to kind of go with our gut. And I think Caden, you know, we, we talked to our players and you get little reads here and there from everybody. I think if it came to a vote with the players, I'm not sure it wouldn't be a unanimous vote. And as far as the assistants go, I feel confident those guys would have got voted in as well. So um, we're happy for everyone. Everyone's earned that, uh, that right. And I think what's special about our group, not only Caden, but, um, there's four of those other guys that have all have championship rings and the other two have the attitude as champions that could have rings. So it, it really makes our leadership group, uh, strong. And plus we're rotating, uh, three A's every other game. So that's, we've never done that before, but we just thought that this is a good time to do that, to spread the leadership out and give other guys opportunities to, uh, step up and be a part of that group. And you, you talked about some of the guys that have worn the C in Prince Albert that you've learned from before, but you've had some, some other experiences outside of PA, of course, with Hockey Canada, with Montreal more recently. Uh, who are some of, the, some of the people, some of the leaders you've encountered in those outside of Prince Albert experiences that you think will impact you? Um, I mean, obviously, um, had, uh, had Dylan Cousins, um, Bowen Byron, and, and Kirby for a little bit. Um, in, in Edmonton for the World Juniors and um, 
I mean, just the short, the short stint that I had with Kirby, obviously, um, he's a very com competitive guy. Obviously you guys see him play um, in Saskatoon. He competes all the time. He, he obviously hates losing. Um, I think that's a, that's a huge trait of his um, that, that got him to earn that is he's just a very competitive person and he'll do lots of things to win. Um, and then obviously Bowen and, and Dylan, um, I mean, they're just two, two guys that could have got the, the C um, like Kirby. They're, they're two very good leaders. Um, they're talkative in the room. They're, um, they're not just, they, they like to joke around, but when it's, it's business they they mean it. So, um, those three guys I've learned from too. And, um, now in Montreal, uh, we have Xavier Alouette, um, who's, uh, who's been in Detroit for a little bit, um, who played in Detroit for a little bit. And, um, now he's here. And, um, again, he just, he's always, um, there for the guys and he, he jokes around and he's, he laughs and he's happy. And, but when it's, it's time for game time, it's business, he means it. So, um, that's something that I've learned, um, I think from, from all four of those guys is, um, you can laugh and joke around, but when it's time for, for business, um, you gotta kind of dial it in and, um, know when it's time for that. Ian, you got to make your AHL debut there yesterday for Laval. Uh, just overall thoughts on how that game was and how the experience has been in the AHL so far. Yeah, it's been good. Um, it's been a lot of fun to, to be around these guys and um, see what pro hockey is kind of like. Um, the game was okay, I think. Um, getting used to the pace a little bit. Obviously, it's a little bit faster. and um, Definitely got to gotta make the right reads or you're going to get picked apart. So, yeah. Um, it was it was a it was a good learning experience for sure that first game. Um, hopefully, get a couple more games um, before I head back. And um, but no, it's it's been fun so far. Very very fortunate to be able to to be here and um, be able to have somewhere to skate and work out in these times. So I'm just trying to make the most of it right now. Mark, the Raiders have have always had this kind of leadership group outside of the you know. There's typically a captain, couple assistants, and then the the broader group that goes into the leadership. Uh, can you explain the decision this year and, and why you wanted to have so many guys actually wearing A's and, and being explicitly a part of the group? Well, I just think that it is a different year. The group didn't get a chance to vote. And to be quite honest, there's a lot of guys that deserve that opportunity. So in order for them to, to split and uh, do that every other game, I think is good for them individually. And for us as a team, it just helps them kind of spread the, the Raider way and uh, we'll add a couple more guys to our leadership group in terms of our meetings. Um, usually we like to get to seven, eight or nine um, with that. But as far as wearing the letters, we just thought this worked, this worked good. And it's, you know, we didn't want to exclude guys that probably should have had the opportunity as well. Mark, just following up from something you mentioned earlier with Matt and uh, Reese, they came in obviously part way through the year, but as you mentioned, guys that have that championship mindset, leadership mentality, uh, what are some of the things that maybe guys or fans that maybe haven't seen them off guys as much as you have that stand out with both Matt and Reese? They hate losing. Uh, losing is unacceptable no matter what, and and I think they have that, and and so them for them to join into – the culture that's been established here in Prince Albert, the Raider way, I think they, it was an easy transition for them because they had a lot of, um, a lot of personal attributes that mirrored how we do things here. So it was easy for them to, to be a part of that. And they fit, they fit in real quick. Caden, you've got uh, kind of a specific experience that's going to, you can draw on this year that not many guys have, and that's that the bubble. You were, you were with it with Team Canada at the World Juniors. Uh, this will be the first time for a lot of guys once you get down to Regina. Uh, what are you going to be able to, what did you learn from your time in Red Deer and in Edmonton that, that is going to help you and help your team through this next couple months? Yeah, I think a um, big part is just trying to be together as much as we can. Um, I don't I don't really know exactly what the setup is going to be like in Regina, but um, if we get chances to, to hang out as a team or um, be together all the time or as much as we can, I think that's that's something that should be done. Um, there's no sense in sitting in your room all day by yourself on your phone or um, playing video games. Um, I think that kind of kind of uh, shut out people. Um, if you do that for too long, it just kind of becomes a uh, 
sort of natural, I guess. So um, I think just trying to get the guys together as much as possible, um, always interacting with each other and um, trying to trying to find things to do together just to, to kind of make time pass um, while we're not at the rink. Are you, uh, is that everything from you, Lucas? Yeah, that's all that I have, Trevor. If you have anything else you want to ask? Yeah, just one more, Mark. Uh, we're not going to go through all the guys in detail, but uh, Spencer Moe, he's going to have the opportunity here to be a five-year Raider, which is something that is it's fairly rare in the Western Hockey League to, to be with one team for five whole years. But what does it say about him and, and his, his commitment to the organization and to the game to, to be where he is right now? Well, he's a good human being. And I think, uh, you know, know his parents, they're great people and uh, by no fluke that that Spencer's a good guy because his parents are good people they raised him right and he's he's easy to coach he's competitive he's quick he's uh, you know he's willing to take in information and he's a proud Raider I mean his his, his parents from around here so uh, you know they watch a lot of games and and follow it so that whole group you know with has, it's kind of been a, like a minor hockey family, even a little bit where the people have, have uh, the parents have followed them around and kind of the parents have turned into a team in amongst themselves. So, um, you know, he's put in the time and that's why this, these games, these 24 games are really important to somebody like him and even Knockbar and, and Paddock, because this is a chance for them to, to earn their, uh, earn a, a contract or get a position for next year. So these games, you know, are, are important to guys like that. Mm -hmm.